the fake news, CNN has turned it into a scandal because they need Trump for their ratings. And, they, and here's the, uh, the pattern of how they turn real news into fake news. You see it in this example, and you've seen it a number of other times. Once you see the pattern, it's just kind of funny. They use the same trick. First, they'll take an audio or a videotape that's longish, and they'll cut out a quote that's out of context. Where have you seen that done? You saw that with the Covington kids. You saw it with the fine people hoax. And you saw it with the uh, drinking bleach or injecting disinfectant hoaxes. Do we live in a world where the news can just disappear something this important? Well, let's talk about the Trump phone call. (laughs) So you all saw the news... Trump made a phone call with, uh, I guess it was the Georgia Attorney General and other people in that office and job, in which he was listing his uh, grievances and evidence for why the election was stolen. And he had a pretty long list of of things like dead people voting and people whose addresses don't check out, and uh, there were places where he claimed that there were more votes than registered voters, etc. Now, I listened to the entire hour because I think you need to, because if you're just a clip coming out, you won't know what to believe. Um, but I listened to the whole hour, and I have a few thoughts. Number one, the president is very, very poorly advised at the moment. I mean, shockingly poorly advised. Now, do I blame the president for thinking that there are all these irregularities which have been, in my opinion, mostly debunked. In my opinion. There's some room for opinion on this. But I feel as if he's mixing claims that have not been debunked and are definitely worth looking into and look pretty strong, like this Epic Times one. I don't know if that's true, but it looks pretty strong and it hasn't been debunked as far as I know. So wouldn't you like to look into that a little bit? Of course you would. But by mixing stuff that, at least, again, just in my opinion, sounds transparently and obviously not true, somebody's not telling the president the, the truth. There is nobody in his circle at the moment who apparently feels safe that they can say, um, you got some strong things you can say and you got some weak things, and maybe just leave the weak things alone. Because if the strong ones work, that's all you need. Why would you throw weak ones in there and and ruin the whole thing? So I would say that for those of you who have been following the claims, they seemed almost embarrassingly uninformed. So that was my take. Now you know, from if you watch me, I could not be a bigger booster of Trump, right? To the point of a flaw. Uh, I'm a booster to the point of flaw. But... Even I didn't think the stuff he was saying about the election was too credible in in whole. There were parts of it that I didn't know, and I'd like to know more about them. Definitely stuff to look into. But the way it was interpreted by the news is uh, in the form of a hoax. Oh, here's the other thing I noticed. He's the president of the United States, albeit lame duck, it looks like at this point, and he could not get the people on that phone call to be even a little bit cooperative. <laughs> Not at all. So watching the President of the United States trying to make a basically a, a Karen phone call and complain about the service, and he couldn't get the supervisor to say anything helpful. It was shocking to see how little power he had. How did it get reported when we saw how little power the, the President has? The, the President couldn't even get the other people to be polite, basically. I mean, he couldn't get anything out of them. And they're his own party. How is that reported? Obviously a dictator, obviously, trying to force things through. If you listen to it, man, that was no dictator. That was whatever you are when you're complaining to the DMV and they're not hearing it. That's what was happening. There was no, That wasn't Hitler. That was... Karen complaining and nobody cared. That was it. Now, it was uh, characterized, of course, as that he was 
you know, he was pressuring and it was illegal and you know, all, the, all the bad people say it's illegal, he was pressuring. But if you listen to the whole call, there are a few things that are very clear. Number one, I would say with complete confidence, and I believed this before, but the, the phone call removes all doubt, and it's this. I'm not a mind reader, but that call makes it really, really clear that Trump believes it was stolen. So if you're thinking to yourself, he doesn't really believe it was stolen, it was some kind of a trick to stay in power, uh, in my mind, there's no chance of that. You hear the phone call, he absolutely thinks he got screwed. He's got lots of evidence that he believes, a lot of it I don't. But he's convinced. I mean, he, he sounds like a true believer, and he sells that completely. So if you're worried about, uh, you know, he's a dictator, that should dispel that, because you didn't see much dictator stuff going on. But the fake news, CNN has turned it into a scandal because they need Trump for their ratings. And, they, and here's the, uh, the pattern of how they turn real news into fake news. You can see it in this example, and you've seen it a number of other times. Once you see the pattern, it's just kind of funny. They use the same trick. First, they'll take an audio or a videotape that's longish, and they'll cut out a quote that's out of context. Where have you seen that done? You saw that with the Covington kids. You saw it with the fine people hoax. And you saw it with the uh, drinking bleach or inject, injecting disinfectant hoaxes. In each case, if you had heard the entire uh, piece, you would have said to yourself, uh, that's the opposite of what the news said. For example, in the fine people hoax, before, before the quote that was taken, Trump talked about the people who were there who were not racist, just there for the statues. And then after that, he made sure that you knew that he was condemning totally the neo-Nazis and the, and the racists who were there. But if you take out the, the, the clarification and also the context that they, they started and just show the clip, looks like he called Nazis fighting people. If you look at the Covington kids clip, all they do is clip out the parts you know, before and after, and it looks like the kid is the, the bad person. But if you see the whole clip, it's obvious that the person he was with, or the, the guy who claimed to be a Native American, or who was, I don't remember the story, you could tell that he was the, the aggressor. Uh, likewise, with the uh, drinking bleach hoax, if you hear it in all of its context, you hear the first part where the president sets it up as talking about light as a disinfectant, then he talks about it, and then he clarifies about light. So if you don't hear that he set it up as light and then he wrapped it up as light and all they take out is injecting, uh, injecting uh, uh, disinfectant, that's how they create the hoax. Now, the fake edit is not enough by itself. All right? That's not by enough by itself. You, you need the other steps and I'll get to them. All right, so in the case of this phone call, what they took on a quote, uh, they, they took little pieces on a quote and where he's saying stuff, that makes it sound as if he's pressuring him to cheat. Now, the opposite is happening. Trump is pressuring him to look into allegations to make sure that nobody cheated. That is literally the opposite of asking him to, as CNN reports it, find votes. <laughs> so the second part of this is that the fake news will use uh, persuasion primers. These are words wit, and phrases which, if you hear them at the same time you've heard the story for the first time, they prime you to see the story a certain way. These are brainwashing persuasion primers. None of this is an accident. They know how to do this. <laughs> it's the fourth time in a row you've seen it. Same pattern every time. So the, the primer words that they use in this case are pressured to find votes. Here's another way to describe exactly what you, you heard on the, uh, the audio. The president um, forcefully was promoting his idea that the people in charge should look into the allegations of fraud so that the public can understand that the election was either clean, which would be good, or they'd find out it wasn't, which would be good in another way. So... Did that sound like pressuring to find votes, mean, meaning manufacture, you know, manufacture about nothing? Did that sound the same? Because what I said was just objectively true. You listen to it, 
he's making his case, he's presenting his claims for fraud. He says, we just want a fair vote. We just want to know. I just want you to look into it. That's all. And, but if you hear pressured and fine votes and you pair it with a clip which doesn't have the rest of the context, it looks like what? A mob boss talking. They, they like to use the things that you've, uh, that you've believed before. Now, because the whole he's a mob boss was already a meme, they just take a meme that is already active in your mind and they just attach a new thing to it. It's much easier to attach fake news to an existing meme. Oh, he's a, like a mob boss. Yeah, whenever he makes a private phone call or thinks it's private, he talks like a mob boss. And here he is making a phone call like a mob boss. Now, if you listen to it, there wasn't anything even close to talking like a mob boss. I mean, not even close <laughs> to, to anything like that. The tone was not that. It was just asking for, for something to be looked into. That was it. And the, the, the boldness with which they, they try this is amazing. Here's some more phrases from CNN. The president was caught on tape. Caught on tape. Now, what do you imagine is true of somebody who was caught on tape? Well, they're guilty. What does it mean to be uh, on a, a recording if you were caught? They're, they're signaling that he's guilty before they've even told you what the content is. That's a primer. That's, that's brainwashing. Right? Um, so he was caught on tape. No, he wasn't caught on tape. There was simply an audio tape which has been available to the public in which not much of anything happened. That's not even close to being caught. <laughs> and by the way, I prefer presidents who don't get caught on audio. Um, here's another a sentence directly out of CNN's coverage that uh, the tape, quote, exposes the depth of his corruption. Suppose you knew there was a long tape, you only heard one part of it, which was something about finding votes, and then you read CNN saying that this tape exposes the depth of his corruption. Wouldn't you kind of think that the parts you didn't hear were more confirming the depth of his corruption? Nothing like that on the tape. Not even close. Nothing even in that general category of corruption. Not even close. It's just him asking for data to be looked at because they've got some claims. They, they would like some data to be released by the state to make sure the claims are true or false. Just, just nothing like exposing a depth of corruption. He literally just asked questions. That's it. Uh, they said it was a smoking gun. <laughs> it, anytime you hear any of these phrases, you're, you're being brainwashed. These are not news phrases. They're not even close to news. It's just straight up brainwashing at this point. And then step three, they Bernstein it. So, you know, you, you bring in uh, uh, Bern, Bernstein or Bernstein? Bernstein? It's Bernstein, right? So they bring in Bernstein just to say it's worse than Watergate. Literally just to say that. Now, have I taught you the trick, the trick of having a big opening offer? So if you're negotiating, which is in a way similar to persuading, and at least in the way I'm going to use it now, if you start with a big opening offer, it, it uh, anchors people to the first thing they heard. So if I say to you, I'm going to sell you my car, and it's worth a quarter of a million dollars. The first thing you think is, there's no car you drive that's worth a quarter of a million dollars. Well, you're tr that's true. It's not worth that, or anywhere near it. But it's the first number you hear. So now I say, all right, maybe it's not worth a quarter of a million, but man, I'd like to get 100000 for it. Now the 100000 doesn't sound so bad because you got primed with the two fifty, And even though the thing is only worth $35,000 used, suddenly the 100 does doesn't sound so bad because you got primed with that two fifty. That's what Bernstein does. The worse than Watergate guy comes in to give you the first offer. Worse than Watergate. And in your mind, you're like, whoa, whoa, that's big. Now, later, when you get more, let's say you get more information about what was on there, you're already primed. 
So maybe you, maybe you come down a little from worse than Watergate in your mind, but you're like, yeah, I'm not sure it's quite worse than Watergate, but sounds like it's pretty bad. See? So that's how their brainwashing works. Start with a big offer. It's worse than Watergate. And then it's hard to get you off that, no matter how much data comes out later. They use repetition because if they say it enough, you'll think it's true. If you hear a news story or item a hundred times, you're going to believe it's more true than if you heard it once. It's just how your brain is operating. Um, They make you think past the sale. So you've got things like exposing his depth of corruption or caught on tape. Those are manipulation phrases to make you think past the sale. The sale is whether anything bad happened. And they're making you think it is exposing the depth of his corruption by making you think of all the other corruption it's like. But they haven't made the sale. They're making you think past it. There's no sale that anything bad happened. They're, they're making you think all the way to it. Not only did it happen, but it's like this other stuff that turns out didn't happen either. All right. Then, of course, you do the mind reading. You know, what is the president's state of mind? Yeah, he's, like, he's thinking like a mob boss, and he's trying to pressure this guy. He's not trying to get uh, justice. Now, in his mind, it's not about justice, because CNN can read his mind. You can't, but they can. they got pundits with powers. And they read his mind, and they find out that, no, despite all of his words that clearly and repeatedly say he just wants to know what happened, and can we see the data, please? Now, there are some legal reasons it's hard to give him the data, but that's a separate story. But if you mind read him, none of that's happening. He's just trying to be a dictator. And then the most important part, which is disappearing the debunks. So this video, which is debunking it thoroughly, will not be highly, uh, highly rated on social media. And so anybody who's going to do what I just did will just sort of get disappeared. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that's CNN, right? CNN's crazy, but at least people will go over to Fox News and they'll read the real story. They might even agree with you, Scott, and they might even be on the same side. So you go over to this Fox News and you look for the story and... Uh, Good luck finding it. Now, I don't know what's up with Fox News, but I would think this would be like one of the big stories as opposed to not mentioned. 